get some competitors out? Pardon? Shall we get some competitors out? You really don't know what to expect when you get there. You'll, you'll be surrounded by some of the best baristas in the world. These are the best of the best. The cream of the crop. And they're all representing their country. They're all hungry to do very well in this competition. And that could be very stressful. Super, super intense. To make it to world, you're already one of the better baristas. You're the best barista competitor from your country. When I won the title, initially, people treated me different. I think there's, there's the expectation that when someone wins the title that everything changes, you know, oh, that man has a title now. Oh, he must be taken more seriously. I had a guy in here take a selfie with me one day. It was weird. He like came to the end account, he's like, you're the Irish barista champion. I kind of, like, I, I am. And he's like, do you want to take a selfie with me? I was like, okay. <laughs> it's just weird for me that someone would want to take a selfie with me. I just found that so bizarre. And I kind of really awkwardly, like, One of our most regular customers took it upon himself one day to write a poem about my coffee shop, uh, Proper Order, and that's, that's the name of the poem, Proper Order. He starts talking about me in the poem, and you know, it, it's hard not to feel it. Well oh, yeah. uh, can I get a flat white, please? Innocently, he took over solicitors. Stripped it back and painted grey. Made hard and oak. Handmade. And an oversized window that shed light on this proper order. Love in Dublin highlighted this Dublin loving. And roasters like playlists change with moods. This is the birthplace of the Caffeine Inquisition. With an a la carte menu that became his carte blanche. Opening too early and closing too late. This dream transformed his life in ways unforeseen. There are no baristas here, only friends, and they'll slap and tickle if you order properly. Accidentally, he took over an industry, stripped it back to a childish play, created bespoke memories, a gentle perfection that illuminates this proper order. I always used to get nervous about what other people thought of me. And of course, you still get nervous when you're about to go on stage. But I love to remember the wet room. So it's this exhibition at the Natural History Museum in Berlin. It's a room within a room that's made out of glass and it's just huge. When you look at it, you feel small and inferior. If I don't want to do what I'm anxious about, if I don't want to go on stage and I'm freaking out, I'm like, I can't do this. I just picture myself in one of those creepy cylindrical glass bottles. I may as well just be in there if I don't do what I'm <laughs> meant to be doing. There's no point to being scared of life.
んか私は私はあまり願掛けって好きじゃなくて<笑>何かあのそのえっ、ー、と何か間違いが起きた時には全て自分の責任だと思っていて。何かをやったかやらないからっていうことに左右されることってすごいなんか嫌いなんですがその中で唯一、えー、と願掛けでやってるのが、えー、道場寺のお参りで、えー、となんか先輩たちがお参りに行ってたので始めたことからきっかけなんですが JBC に出始めた時予選が通りますようにと祈り通り、えー、決勝に行けますようにと祈ったら優勝し。世界大会で決勝に行けますようにと言って祈ったらあの決勝まで行けてなんかもうそろそろ笑えないあの実績を残しているので唯一やってるのが増上寺へのお参りです。Oh、my God, think about it. Yeah, she's been she's been the finalist two times in the WBC. She's only world famous barista, but she nearly wanted to come back. She was in the final in Japan barista championship. But she still k e e p competing.、Yeah. So that's because she wanted to come back to WBC so bad. She never, she never g i v e up for what she wanted to do. So I'm pretty sure that she's dying to get the first place. She's dying. Yeah, I think. She's a super beast right now. <laughs> Chasing is a, is a huge part of what makes me who I am. And it kind of irritates my wife、uh, to a degree because I, like, she'll ask me how dinner was. I have this thing where if people ask me a question about how something tastes, I kind of go into like coffee taster mode and I just become, begin to analyze and like let them know what I'm thinking in my head. And, and sometimes those things aren't positive.、It、smells kind of like blue cheese. He has an amazing palate. And I think that's what the competition is all about. You have to not only know your coffee, but you have to explain why they're, they're tasting what they're tasting. And if you don't have a palate for that,、uh, you're, you're, you're going to suffer in this competition. I've hurt my, hurt, hurt my wife's feelings a few times just being pretty honest about the way things taste. It is both frustrating because I'm the one that cooks for him and、uh, really fascinating. I love the way he tastes things.、Um, Let me do this Grim Reaper in the、uh, like、avalanche side.、Awesome. I get kind of like jealous that I can't taste things the way he tastes them. This is like green apple,、uh, tangerine, and then blue raspberry. It has a lot of acidity and it's pretty fruity. That's one of the things that I'm really drawn to love about coffee is that coffee can com- be comprised of such complex acids. But yeah, being at that is not only my like, livelihood being a taster, but it's also like. Thing that I can't turn off. Hi, welcome to Coffee with Brian, brought to you by San Remo Coffee Machines. So, you want to be a world champion barista? Well, here's a few things that you'll need to know. Baristas will need to make 12 drinks in 15 minutes for espressos, for milk beverages, and for signature drinks for a panel of, ju- a- a panel of judges. Baristas will receive points for how accurately they describe their coffee's flavor notes to the judges. Competitors will lose one point for every second they go over time. Anyone that goes a full minute over time will be disqualified. A barista's signature drink may include any ingredient you wish. The ingredient must complement the coffee and create a new flavor experience. You may not use alcohol. Oh, 
Here's a good one. Judges, m judges may assign points for inspiration, passion, and originality of a barista's routine. In conclusion, people often say your best is good enough. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those people are wrong. Winning this competition is going to be tough. But think about this. How good would it feel to be the best in the world at something? I'm ready to talk whenever you guys are. Cup A. I liked it. I got a little bit of like kind of cooked fruit and uh, some stone fruit on it. A little dry. It's a little bit like dry and crisp in the finish. Cereal fruit. You know, fruit cereals. Oh, yeah, stuff. like fruity pebbles kind of situation. Yeah, kind of savory. Uh, still like juicy, citric, bright, still good sweetness, but had like this onion kind of like herb quality coming in the back. So, like, very minor amount of savory to it also. So it wouldn't be my favorite. This would be a coffee I'd be concerned about, like holding up oh. over the over the long term. So what do you think of the interesting one? Not one of my favorites on the table. I feel it. pretty confident that it's not going to hold up. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, this coffee scared the living crap out of me. These were probably selections that we made in Panama that tasted really amazing, like super fruity, really bright and floral that I haven't held up. It's a little bit disappointing in that the fruit has really, you know, kind of like fallen apart. I guess I'm unique in the fact that uh, being synesthetic, when I taste the coffee, it's like a little flash of color. Some people are gonna watch this and go, your man's talking shit. He does not see color when he tastes the coffee. Um, but I do, so like when, when I taste the coffee, you know, for example, we have uh, natural Costa Rican on the bar at the moment that is like bright pink uh, with a black line underneath it, but it's got like a wavy texture. And I know now, like after a couple of years in the coffee industry, that that is, you know, cherry's dark chocolate and the wavy texture is like a natural, like it's funky. I don't talk about it anymore because it becomes one of those things of, you know, oh, taste that, what color is that? With my synesthesia anyway, when I taste something, sometimes it can be like a blessing and sometimes it can be a curse. So sometimes I can see something in a coffee that maybe other people wouldn't taste. So like, you know, there might be a little green, a couple of green spots down in the corner. And I say, oh, what is that? You know, it, it kind of makes me look into things a little bit more. But then other times something will appear and it's like this big band of color. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I can't figure it out. It helps me probe a coffee, but then sometimes it can be really frustrating if I can't figure out what it is. I'm 
I mean, that one's way, like, way more compact. Still, like, a lot of the flavor, but, like, a really, really kind of blueberry dominant. And when I tasted it, it had, like, golden sparkles in it. It's magical. <laughs> mm. Definitely. Definitely that one. All right. We have a recipe. Here we go. He wants nothing but to compete. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's swimming background. I don't know what he was like as a six-year-old, but I wouldn't want to been, wouldn't want to have been in the same playground as him. I just remember, you know, my mom bringing me to a pool was one of my first memories, and just being thrown in. Kind of from the age of 15, swimming started to get really, really serious. And I, like, I was lucky enough to be flown all over the world for a swimming competition. I think most of my life has been defined by my my career in swimming. The whole swimming thing, this ingrained competition in me. When I stopped swimming, you know, realizing that what I had done and, and done really, really well in my life so far just wasn't for me anymore. That's a tough thing to do, like something that my whole life was dedicated to, just realizing that I didn't enjoy it anymore. From the day one, he wanted to be the best. He's almost his own worst enemy. Sometimes his ambition uh, outweighs his ability. I am naturally pretty competitive guy. Last year, it was a qualifying event in Kansas City, and like I prepared really, really well, had this amazing coffee, and then something happens on stage, and apparently the shots just tasted awful. I scored really poorly, and I didn't qualify to even compete at nationals last year. Defeat is really difficult, and missing the mark, like, it shook me to the core. I really just stress so much for him, because I know that he stresses out so much, and I hate to see him anxious um, and worried, and he's kind of, he can be sort of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, inconsolable personally in my own life and um, in the life of my family, we struggle with uh, clinical depression and that's like a thing that is real in my life and it's like, that's most definitely the hardest thing. This dude wasn't gonna compete again after uh, he didn't do so well in qualifiers uh, last year and he was very down on himself, down on the competition. Dude is really hard on himself. Um, he he sets the bar really high for himself, and then when he doesn't hit it, um, I mean, he he just beats himself up. So when he said he wanted to compete again, I, mean, I thought that was super super inspiring. First place, United States barista champion. Give it up for Kyle Ramage, now coming USA from North Carolina. There they are, folks. Give it up for your new champions. Represent the United States in Seoul, Korea. Having people in my life that, that love me and correct me when my mind is just wrong. Like, my wife is a great grounding force in, in that. Uh, and, and Lim helped me just try to stay grounded in knowing that I have worth and I have meaning and that they love me. It all started just from being in a small town in Australia, and my parents split up. They got divorced when I was 15, and it was a lot of shit taken out on me. You see, yeah, anyway, they, yeah. Childhood, no. Yeah. I guess Berlin will forever be the place that I became an adult. It definitely was the first place that I was alone for the first time in my life. Moved from my family with my partner, moved to Berlin, and then all of a sudden he wasn't there and I had no one who I considered family. And that was a really hard time. But... I learned to be alone and learned to go after what I wanted and and I have made my family here it just feels like home now
In terms of Nikki's personal life, I think it's pretty tough because it's Nikki's the one who's competing. Maybe it's okay, you know. I go training and then say whatever that I want that I need to say. And I go back home and I eat a dinner and I sleep. But for Mickey, she needs to work really hard. Even after I came back to home, she needs to work on so many things. And she needs to coordinate so many things. And her personal life, I think it's uh, you know, all about COVID now, I think. It's 100 percent ありがとうございます。what I hate about Brista competitions is how boring everyone's setup is. It's all made out of wood and it's like all like the most unstimulating things you could find put onto tables. I wanted to have a really good representation diagram that was engaging and actually quite cool to look at. <laughs> Your example. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay, it looks more complicated than it is, but also the colours, like if the colours match my cups. Does it really need to be in colour? It should be colourful, that's the whole point, is that everything's colourful. It's like making specialty coffee fun and not boring as shit again. And I thought a pop-up book would be really cool because it's just like everyone loved, like, I loved that as a child, like loved it. Eh. では、集まっていただいてありがとうございます。えっと、もういい、えっと、トレイを作った後にメニューの相談をクリエイティブチームの人たちとさせてもらって。はい。なんかあの、この3つのドリンクを通してなんか共通の体験をさせたいっていう気持ちがあります。はい。これは何ですか? あの、この<笑> シンプルで<笑> 
すごい無理多い一週間から違うな一週間ですねってなっちゃいましたが今釘を刺されてきましたもっと早く行っていただければ私は I think that's for sure things t h e r which keep her up at night and to bring things on point how she wants it because at the end then she's quite a perfectionist as well but it takes its time and to really like work it out because she's by herself in a way and doesn't have like a, a team of 50 people supporting her and with her age of 25 of really like working it out singly I think it's something really special mm-hmm. Turns out they're very hard to make.、Um, and whilst my boyfriend is very talented,、uh, I wouldn't want to put that pressure on him to try and make this giant, complicated pop up book that, like, pull tabs and oxygen comes out, and, like, pull tabs and green beans come out and they split. So we're looking into other avenues now using the same concept, but just not so complicated. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Is it possible? Are you a genius? Can you do it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No other choice, huh? If you want clean underwear for the next month, you don't have a choice, no. Yes. Thank you. And you're so understanding. I could not imagine being with someone who's competing in one of these competitions. Like, you're fucking crazy. My life changed the most when. I heard Ali saying, I do. Being Irish, you're always like filled with self doubt. So it's really, really nice to get that like pat on the back from, from Ali to be like, yeah, you're, you're a good guy. You're, you're worth spending the rest of my life with, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't be the Irish Bruce the champion without Ali.、Um, in, my, in my preparation for the championships this year, I was like rehearsing, 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 and really kind of like, Not enjoying the whole process because it was just draining. Ali pushed me to do better and better and better. And yeah, if it wasn't for Ali pushing me forward to do it, I, I would have just, you know, packed it in two weeks before the competition and withdrawn. We've really grown up together. Like, I think one of the dumbest <laughs> an- things that we did was we、uh, graduated from college.、Yep. Two weeks later, we got married. And two months later, we moved 800 miles away to North Carolina. 800 miles away with like 1200 bucks. I think we had. Oh, yeah, we had like $1,200 in our bank account, no job prospects, and we were so broke. And I remember going to bed that night thinking, like, this is our life. Like, we're going to be poor, broke <laughs> grad students for the rest of our life. And we just need to pack up and go home to Mississippi because this is not, this isn't going to work.、Um, and so to look back on that like moment of disparity now, Um, and see how far we've come because of Kyle's like, hard work and dedication and success and love for the, for the craft of coffee and his passion. I mean, it's just it's the most humbling thing ever. It really is. Yeah. You said it pretty well. I don't know. It's been hard, but it's been fun. I don't even know what worlds could bring for us, but I know it's huge. Like, I made our flights、um, in such a way that we don't have to fly out of South Korea the day after because I fully intend to be celebrating all night on November 12th because my husband is the new world barista champion. No pressure. I don't know whether she has a boyfriend or not. I don't even know. I mean, like, I can't really ask you. you know, I, I feel responsible you know, for that. Hahahaha. <laughs> 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 Like 
customers being able to engage and Here we see Chloe Natras practicing her lines for the World Barista Championships. Each competitor has 15 minutes to be able to produce a load of really technical information and still make 12 drinks. So knowing every single one of these lines can really pay dividends. Let's watch. This results in an incredibly clean, sweet espresso with amazingly bright acidity. In my opinion, a perfectly balanced espresso. And yeah, so right now it's just workflow and making sure everything's timed right and getting a loose because it just, last night I got a little bit high and I read through my speech again and I was like, delete, 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 fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. And I rewrote half of it. And it's better now, like. <laughs> okay, once from the top, do you wanna go yeah. from, do you wanna start from the top? Firstly, I freeze my coffee by liquid nitrogen and- That was good, liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen, you want to combine combine together. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. Yeah, good, good. Liquid nitrogen. Good, good. Liquid nitrogen. Good. And same as before, dub, double grind, you combine together. Double grind. Double grind. Good, good. Double Very, grind. Like that, like that. Janet Jackson. Liquid. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Sorry. <laughs> Janet Jackson. <laughs> Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Yes. Yeah. So Janet Jackson. <laughs> Janet Jackson, Janet, double grind, double good, grind. Good. What we talked about last week was that the hands were a little bit floppy and a bit vague. You didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. So I, what I said was keep them down unless you're going to use them. Use them to enhance and to emphasise what you're saying. And you did. So much more going on with your hands. You were telling a story with your hands as well as your eyes. Yeah. That was great. And of course the content of what you were saying too. Yeah, yeah. So I was very pleased with there's much more going on, much more confidence and much more presence here. Just a little bit sunk in your oh, lower body. Yeah. Be proud. Be very proud of the work that you're doing. You're not Irish Barista Champion for nothing, and you want to um, scale up those heights again. So it's fantastic work. That first 30 seconds, yeah. really enjoy that, because that's the hardest and the nervous, very, very nervous beginning. Yeah. So I always start with a hello. <laughs> uh, Go. Hello, judges. My name is Niall, and I'm the Irish Barista Champion. Hello, my name is Niall. Hello, my name is Niall. I'm the Irish Barista Champion. I'm here to talk to you about this and that. You didn't have to... Uh, my name is Niall. I'm the Irish Barista Champion. The last important word dropped away. OK. And we need them, especially when you're nervous, we need yeah. them to have a bit of weight. That's true. You just kind of cut the bullshit, you yeah. know? Like, just, no pleasantries. Yeah, just... no pleasantries. It's like, OK, he's talking about something. I need to start listening yeah. right now. So if I'm, like, on this side and you're, like, delivering that message, I'm going to be like, OK, he's talking about something. What is he talking about? Well, I'll kind of compose myself a little bit, kind of get it back together. Time. 16 months ago, Christopher Hinden and Maxwell Colonna Dashwood, along with a few other specialty coffee professionals in the United Kingdom, got together to conduct an experiment. This is both qualitative and quantitative. So I don't want you to get too scientific with them. People always remember the sciencey stuff I talked about because that's kind of interesting and cool and different, but a lot of the things that are getting really high scores for them are that I kind of hooked them with this scientific thing and then I showed it with a beautiful coffee. Right. If, I, if what I give them is good, they're hooked. Every barista can explain flavor notes, but when you explain why you're tasting mm -hmm. cherry, why you're tasting mm -hmm. lime, why mm -hmm. you're tasting florals, right. you connect that to the farm, to the processing, um, making it unique. Yeah, there's a lot of people in competition using caches, but this is why this, this case is unique. So just thinking about easing a little tension in your jaw. There's about four exercises we can do, and they're very simple ones. Put your finger there, just underneath your ear. Yawn. Now just explore that little gap if it's open up here, the temporomandibular joint. Ah, right, turn, just gently, very gently with your finger. Other direction as well. Opening that space, and think about the space between your upper molar teeth and your lower molar teeth. Now with the heels of your hands, come down. I'll let the lower jaw go. Let the yeah. tongue go with it. So you've turned into Edvard Monk's The Scream. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Good. Think that was silly? This is very silly. Interlace your fingers. You're going to shake here, relaxing in your wrists. There. Yeah. Work there. Release here. Now do one, two, three, four, five of this. Hello. 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 The signature drink is the part of the competition where the barista gets to express themselves and maybe their culture or their place they live or the things that inspire them. So it's really one of the only places where we get to control everything.
so I wanted to figure out how I could augment and amplify both my own personality as well as the personality of where I live. I chose to use uh, hops because North Carolina is known for having a vibrant beer community. I also chose to use uh, a local honey. Just showed a little bit of the character of the place where it comes from. Is yep. thing in the face? You won't. If you look on this side, you check it out. You see all the pollen on their hips. You see those bees with the yellow pollen pockets? Oh yeah. That's how they carry pollen. In little bags. Yeah, it's like they're like cargo shorts. <laughs> they're, like they're, cargo shorts. <laughs> they're like a bunch of mini dads, but they're all girls. I'm using a really like floral hop, uh, like for like brewing beer, and then a floral honey and a floral coffee to make to like come together to make another floral substance. Mm, it tastes really good, actually. It's like really caramelly and like uh, like uh, really caramelized sugars, like caramel or um, almost like a vanilla. Ah, I got some. I got some. Hey, okay. first thing. I actually don't remember what it feels like to get stung. Oh, there we go. Oh man. Did yep, you get one stung. too? Yep. We lied to them. Ah, there's another one. Yep. You all right? It's on your hand? Yep. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Do you want your gloves? Nah. You sure? Yeah. Take yeah, it hurts. Smoke them. Got one you on, on, your, your, on your beard, trying to climb into your beard, actually. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry buddy. I'm sorry, buddy. Like, I freaked out. Step back. I know. I freaked yeah, out. I'm good. sorry. <laughs> the first time I saw him compete, I think it, it goes back to that thing where he, he competed alone. He kind of... You could have asked a lot of people for help and maybe always on your first time, you don't know who to ask for help. So I think he, uh, if you had to come to us or anybody and be like, I'm gonna use champagne flutes, honey and chocolate on stage, uh, we would've been like, no, never do that. Ever do that. I went to put a little bit of honey on the rim of my glasses and it just went everywhere. It like poured down the side of the glasses, you know, was like cleaning it off my fingers. The only thing I didn't do was like lick honey off my fingers that year. <laughs> and you did, yeah, you, you put that was. honey on that glass and it just ran down that glass. <laughs> Never again. And then with my like disgusting looking glasses that were like covered in honey, I decided it would be great to add chocolate powder to this. But instead of like using cocoa, <clears throat> I decided to try and grind uh, some nice chocolate on stage under hot lights. I just stuck the Chocolate like gravel <laughs> stuck to runny honey on the side of a champagne I remember, glass. I was just like, oh my God, what's he doing? So the resulting signature drink had delicious raspberry puree, some nice natural Ethiopian, and it was just this big fucking mess pouring down a glass. I was just like, oh God, it's just like, this is a train wreck. It's the thing I come to coffee competitions for. The funny thing about a barista competition is you still smile at the judges and say, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's maybe, that's maybe uh, the thing I remind Niall most in, you know, when I need to like lower that ego a little. I'm like, do you remember the champagne flutes? Scotty? Yes? Can you get the hot water for the cascara? Of course. There's a big chip in this glass. <laughs> it's a good job you've got loads of spares. <laughs> so, no to that. Okay. Mm, it smells like cascara. It's weird. <laughs> Um, how long do you think we should brew it for? Six minutes. You think so? I'll get a micro so you can taste it. So it's, it's nice just to have somebody to be able to rant to and vent all your ideas. Usually it just involves us getting drunk and coming up with super weird ideas for signature drinks. Like the amount of signature drink ideas we've come up with, like, over about four more beers. Every more, like, every extra beer you have, you're just like, no, no, like, what we need to do is, like, melt sugar and then do this, and let's use, like, a salad spinner to make some coffee sugar. Uh, and then everyone wakes up in the morning, and you're like, 
What the hell were we talking about last night? No one even writes it down as well, so you can never even remember what the idea was, but I think a lot of like our best ideas have come when we're drunk and then we've completely forgotten them, so... We could have a completely like world-winning presentation between the two of us, and we have absolutely no idea. Mm. Mm. It's just like the ripest peach apricot. Smell this one. Mm. I think we could even go for like a higher dose, mm -hmm. less water. And bring the fruit out more. Where do I find that balance of like sweet, uh, salty, or bitter, and acidic, and all these flavor compounds coming together? How can I find that? Kenneth explores flavors unabashedly, and she explores flavors that maybe I wouldn't think to explore. I really want to kind of lean on her and see if she could kind of find something that kind of brought a little bit of like taste of place kind of concept to like bring something with me from North Carolina that was special. Yeah, chew that up, spit it out. You don't have to spit it out, strictly speaking. It's pretty, it's good to eat, but it's not like a very sour. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow, mm -hmm. kind of real sour. And it'll pull like a little, just a little bit of juice out. It's like super sweet and really, really floral. It's pretty good. It's really good, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's like nature's candy. It's like a raspberry almost, kind of, sort of. Yeah. The thing with extracting flavor Ooh. from honeysuckle. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little bit bitter. Oh, it's yeah. too bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me try this thing out. Oh, it's super goopy. I'm a texture person, this could be bad. Yeah, could be bad for you. Yep. Yeah. But it's great for me. Uh-huh. These are good. Look at me. Yeah. Woo! Careful. The results of anything we've ever foraged have always been better than I think we could have bought. Like, yeah. you can buy fig leaves, you can buy lavender, but, like, something that's had to, like, weather a storm yeah. is flavoursome. <laughs> that's pretty epic. It, it shouldn't be as easy as going to a supermarket, I don't think. No. Especially, especially when you're using coffees that are, like, the best of the best, yeah. you know? Well, yeah, if you think, like, yeah, the effort it takes to find a great coffee, like, why not put the effort into every other little element of yeah. it? <laughs> that's for you. Thank you. Number well, three. You get that, like, slow sweetness yeah. from it as well, it still. Is. It's super, well, super bitter, but... A tannin that you, mm. need to, you need to wash your mouth out there, you know? They're not good yet. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really not good yet. This does taste better. And as well, going to the shops and getting something doesn't have a yeah. story to it. It doesn't have anything about it. It doesn't have adventure. Or... We were able to incorporate, like, half of the flavors that are available here into a signature drink. Kind of that terror style with... That would be awesome. Stuff. Yeah. That's no. cool. Oh. Is that so good? Can we go find more? These have been picked by hungry men. A couple of scandals, man. Who's the horses? The horses at them. I think I just, I pressed the wrong setting and it started too fast. I don't want this to happen in Seoul. The seal on this isn't perfect, like. seen anything more frightening in your life. This is why I shouldn't do it when it's hot. It expands and then... Fuck!
Judges. Judges. Your signature drink is you inside must crack here. It open. Sherbet thing again, though. This looks fucking horrible in that glass. I'm not sure if that there's too much citrus in it. All right, scrap that. What? Don't know. Just kind of want to eat one. <clears throat> Something far too erotic about figs. We were even, like, joking about today that the amount of times I've nearly snapped at her. Um, I don't think I've ever, like, properly showered at Chloe, but I'm just, like, slowly writing down everything on a list. Like, for now, I don't want to say anything to her just because I know that she's a little bit on edge, which is, you know, normal. I don't think they're ripe enough to make them taste like anything, and I'm not going to be able to get figs in Korea anyway. It's just a dream. You could ship them. What? Smart I'm not shipping ass. fucking figs to Korea. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. As soon as this competition's over, I'm gonna just reel all of it off and just be like, that one time you said this, fuck you. This time, yep, yeah, that wasn't good. Um, but I think it's, it's nice just to have someone just to bite their tongue sometimes and just take it. It's like having a punching bag, I think, sometimes. You just need to be like, oh, everything's going wrong, and you just throw something at someone. Um, yeah, fuck signatures. シグニチャードリンクのアイディアはいつもいろいろなコーヒー以外のところからアイディアを得ることが多くて Competition training is sometimes really tough because you need to create something new, but there is no answer for that. So it's like art. You need to create something amazing and something uh, makes people really impressed. それがコーヒーに加わるとどんな味わいの変化が生まれるのかっていうのを試してみたくてこのドリンクのアイディアが生まれました。私にとってのヒーローは中原美恵です。I always respect her, but I don't know. She knows that. I'm a coaster, barista, or to the Kerate, no more canojo no kakede, canojo ga kohi no tano shaya, ano, barista no taikai de do you mono nano ka, do reda ke kachigaru mono nano ka, do na tano shi koto nano ka, you know, subete o shete, so ste zu to sasai to the kete kurete no ka.私は自分に自信はあまりないけれども、私のチームは本当に素晴らしい人たちばかりで、彼女や彼らが私をあの自分の持っている力以上の場所に引き上げてくれます。なので私は自分に自信はないけれども、自分のチームをすごく誇りに
you know, we do our part to help her win. I just wanted to make you a delicious tasting beverage. I have 16 mils of an orange marmalade sugar syrup. Now my grandmother makes delicious orange marmalade. It's very simple to make. You take oranges, you peel the skins, you put it in salt water for two days. Remove it, put it in fresh water for one more day. On the third day, you poke a hole in it with forks to release the flavor and cook it in a simple sugar syrup at 90 degrees for four hours. Hey room was roasted with a with a low, with a higher temperature at the start, 190 Celsius degrees because of the higher density of the beans. Now let's make a happy ending for the whole story. Let's blend all together. Let till the foam disappear. Let's take a second sip. Very nice. In addition to the flavor we tasted before. We got a new flavor, cherry, even though we didn't add any cherry flavors. We also got a bergamot that still reflect geisha characteristics, and also the chocolate. So that's the whole idea about blending, bring everything together to create more possibility. I really wish you guys enjoy it. And it's my time.
is my time. 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 That's my time. 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 I was not ready. I was freaking out. I think I just gave myself an anxiety attack. The speech was not finalized until the day before. Just making sure I didn't forget anything. That's the worst fear of mine. So, time. Hello, welcome. My name is Chloe, and I'm very pleased to finally be here with you today. It's the novelty in specialty coffee that inspires me. The new, the original, and the unusual. We are ever growing, ever changing, and ever learning. And I think this is incredibly special. I brought a coffee with me today that encapsulates all of this for me. It's La Punta Sugar Sweet Processing from Sumava de Lourdes Montelano Benito in the West Valley of Costa Rica. Sugar Sweet is an anaerobic